Well over a year ago, there was a lot of hubbub on the internet when Muse Group bought Audacity. And not only were people upset that Audacity was being purchased, but Muse Group kind of bungled the whole thing. Where they had some terms of service stuff, they started putting in telemetry and all this stuff that just kind of pissed a lot of people in the open source community off. And it spawned a whole bunch of forks and there was high drama for a long, long period of time around the purchase. And there were also some people who had some hope that now that Audacity had some actual financial support, that there would be some changes in the direction that Audacity had been going in. Because Audacity, whether you like it or not, kind of had the sense that it was very stale. The interface was really old. It used a lot of outdated libraries and things like that that just either weren't being updated anymore or had to be forked because they weren't being maintained anymore. There is a lot of stuff in a very old, cumbersome code base that people had hopes would change once it had a more staunch level of support from an actual corporation. So there was a lot of drama, there was some hope, and here we are a year and almost a half later because it was bought in May of 2021. And what I thought I would do today is kind of take a look at what Audacity looks like now and see if there has actually been any changes. Because there, like I said, was some hope that when Muse Group took over Audacity that there would be some change and for good, not just for bad. So let me show you what Audacity looks like now. This is what Audacity looks like, and if you are familiar at all with what Audacity looked like before they were purchased, you'll know that it looks exactly the same. A year and a half later, this is what Audacity looks like. Now, personally, everyone knows that I'm very picky when it comes to what my programs look like. I want them to be well designed, and that's kind of your universal over all of the applications that I use. The thing is, is that I was never really that big of a hater when it comes to this interface, right? Maybe it's because this is what Audacity's always looked like, right? There was no period of time where it ever looked any better than this. So as long as it didn't get any worse, I'm perfectly happy. So that it stayed the same hasn't really been a problem for me. I still find it useful. I still use it for every video that I make. I always record my audio separately, so I always use Audacity for everything. And it still works just as well as it has for years and years. That doesn't mean that there aren't still problems. There are, and I'll talk about those in a minute. But for the most part, it's still just as functional, despite there not being very many updates for the good over the last year and a half. So let's talk about some of the things that have changed, and specifically one thing that has changed. So there has been a change in the way they do tracks in Audacity. So there used to be a grabber tool. So if you went up here to these tools up here, there used to be a tool that allowed you to drag your tracks all around, right? And you could use it via key binding, however you wanted to use it. That is now gone. Now the only way to drag your tracks is by dragging the title of the track, which is here. Now obviously I can't show you this because I'm using Audacity, but you click here and then you can drag it. Now in some ways that works better because it's always available to you no matter what tool you're using. But it was very confusing for me when I, they first introduced that because I was so used to using the grabber tool. So that's one thing that they've changed in the last year. One thing that hasn't changed is the fact that you still cannot, as far as I'm aware, in any distros repos, find a version 3.0 or higher version of Audacity. So if you're on Flatpak or Snap or any place like that, you can get version 3.0 of Audacity. It's like 3.0. 0, 1 or whatever it happens to be. It's a little bit higher than 3 now. But the point is, is that like Arch, Ubuntu, anything based on those distros, they all are still using Audacity version 2 dot something. And the reason why is because after 3.0, they started putting in that telemetry and a lot of distributions just won't include a newer version of Audacity. So what's happening here is that there is a fragmentation over what version of Audacity a lot of people are using. So if you're using it from a repo that was included with your distro, you're using an older version of Audacity. Now, the thing is, is that you're not going to notice a lot of changes. 
However, there is one big change. Version 3.0 introduced a new file format. And that new file format is incompatible with older versions of Audacity. So I found myself needing to use a flat pack anytime I go to a different distribution because I need that new file format. All of my files that I've saved for every video that I've made are in that new file format. So because that's true, I haven't been able to download Audacity from any distros repos in quite a while. And I think a lot of people are probably like that. So if you ever try out version 3.0 or 3 whatever it is of Audacity and you start saving some files that way, you're going to be forever locked into using 3 plus when it comes to actually being able to read those files. So that's the situation I've been in. So that's obviously the biggest change that 3.0 plus has brought to Audacity. Now, the thing is, is that a lot of people here have expressed disappointment that there hasn't been some movement on improvement for Audacity. And I'm fairly sympathetic towards that viewpoint because it has been well over a year and there hasn't been a lot of noise when it comes to what they're doing. When it comes to a, maybe a redesign or new features or any of that stuff, it feels like it's very much where it was a year and a half ago before the purchase of Audacity by Muse Group. Now, it can be argued that that's perfectly fine, but it can also be argued that the only thing that they've done with it in a year and a half is actually make it worse because of telemetry and the way they do their development now with developer agreements and things like that. So there, there is an argument to be made that is actually in a worse position now than it was a year and a half ago. And I would also be sympathetic towards that argument. So Audacity is in a weird place right now. It has been purchased by a corporation that has money and is supposedly putting some effort into improving it, but we haven't seen any improvement yet. Not really. So that is the state of Audacity a year and a half after their acquisition by Muse Group, and I just thought I would kind of look in on it, even though I still use it every day. But I wanted to kind of remind people that that thing happened, and we really haven't seen much change at least for the good, when it comes to Audacity. So, that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on Audacity or anything else, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter, at LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. Just below the like button, if you could hit that like button, it'd really help me out. It does help the channel amazingly, so please do that if you can, if you like the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should hit the subscribe button, because I do produce Linux content pretty much every day of the week. And it's varying levels of good, so you should definitely check it out. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. If you want to support me a year in advance, you can do so, and you can save yourself 10%. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all amazing people. And without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.